120 miles south of Atlanta, nestled in the rolling hills of southwestern Georgia, the remains of nearly 14,000 Union soldiers sow the ground surrounding old Camp Sumter, or what history would remember as Andersonville Prison. Built on two hills separated by a marshy stream, 45,000 soldiers were contained like cattle on 26 acres behind a 15-foot stockade. Forts on either side had cannons trained on them for fear of an uprising, one that never came, as these men were no longer men but starving animals cast aside to waste away in their own filth and despair. Nearly one-third of those who crossed through the two gates stripped naked and robbed of their possessions and dignity, would never leave this place, save for one final short trip by death carts to the mass graves dug by those who could still endure. If there is such a thing as hell on earth, this is it, and one hopes not for freedom, but to see the dawning of the next morrow, for nothing here is certain except for suffering and hunger. Those who could wrote of their ordeal, and their words filled with pain lay the horrors bare. All hope has vanished, and we are not living but only drawing out a miserable existence, and death seems to be the only words of relief for us from our misery and suffering. There was some 49 dead carried out, and they say there are 25 more to go, the cold and rain we had last night killed them. Mainly the poor boy here that hasn't a rag to cover the nakedness. Boys die like sheep, 45 to 92 per day, stripped of everything, money and clothes. Bloody diarrhea comes on suddenly. August 11th, 64. There was 158 men died yesterday, last night. The largest number that has died any time during 24 hours since I came in. God have mercy on the sick, for the lot is a heart. The reps fired their artillery, got their men in line and raised the devil for fear we would make a break, but the breaking is played out. For we are too weak to get to the sink and back without help. Death before dishonor. This is the motto many here held to be the same as scripture but such times are bound to push any man to his breaking point. These men became known as the Raiders, turned on their brothers in arms, maiming and killing for what little left remained to be stolen. There's a crowd of two or three hundred in here that do nothing else but murder and rob. The Rebs took a hundred out, and fourteen from that, and said they would be hung as there is many a poor chap that's lying cold on their account. Six of the raiders were marched up to the gallows, a cap put on, the ropes slipped over their necks, and the platform kicked from under them. Five of them were launched into eternity without a struggle. The other, his rope broke and fell to the ground. The rope fixed and he was taken up a second time. He pleaded for mercy, but it was too late. It was a terrible sight to witness, but it had to be done. These six men were buried not within a grave next to their brothers, but apart and away, lonely and dead as their lives ended in disorder. I have witnessed many horrible sights, but none to compare to what I saw today. A man lying on the bank of the stream, beaten to death by maggots. We could do nothing with him, but let him alone to die in his real death. A true accounting of all those who rest here may never fully be known. Nearly 13,000 names of the lost have been recorded for history, with almost a thousand marked only as unknown. It is to thee, the unknown soldier, whose name was lost in death, that we owe the highest duty of remembrance, for it is he who gave the last full measure of devotion in a cause greater than himself. It would be impossible to describe the feelings of the men when our dear old flag came into view. Tears of joy filled many eyes, 
and cheer after cheer rent the air, for we were finally free, back to old glory, who flies still among us today, for it is a cause that we will fight for, we will die for, and we will protect at all costs. Hallowed be thy name.